Hi friends, good morning. It's uh, Sunday morning uh, podcast time with Brother Mike. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm having some strange problems with the uh, visual today on this uh, podcast. I hope I'm coming through, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Nobody. It's strange. I can't see myself on it. Uh, this has never happened before. Weird. Well, I'm going to go ahead for a couple of minutes, assuming that you're there. Uh, this is Brother Mike with the Arizona Deliverance Center in Phoenix. HardcoreChristianity.com is the website. If you need to get a hold of me, you can do that by going to uh, Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com. You can contact us on the ministry line, 602-636-5800. And uh, I don't think anybody's on here. I, and I, if you're on here, uh, type me something and let me know if you can actually see me. For some, <laughs> for some reason, the uh, video is not working on my uh, live stream, StreamYard today. So I hope you're there and you can hear me. Got a really great Bible study for you. Um, today I want to talk to you about the Lot family. Um, they were very much like America. Um, yeah, somebody just said they can't see me. Yeah, I can't see myself on it either. It's very strange. Uh, the screen is black. Yeah, that's exactly what I've got. Very weird. Um, hmm. I'm assuming you can hear me, though. So, uh, weird. Okay, I'll have to figure it out later. Um, you know, in the Bible, dysfunctional families are common, as they are today. We, obviously, we got a lot more of them today than we have uh, normally have. But uh, the Lot family in Sodom, they were like super weird. And uh, but before this happened, before this happened, you got to go back to the great prophet Abraham, the, the, the father of faith, the one and only. And uh, Father Abraham was called by God for a a special mission, a special purpose. And uh, he was called out of his family and he was called to come by himself and just take his wife and so on and all of his property and to leave and go to a land that God was gonna share with them, which we know is the promised land now. But uh, Abraham, like you and I, uh, some of us have been called to do something some of us, meaning everybody that's listening to me, has been called by God to do something. And they screwed up along the way. I've done it. I'm sure you have. Well, Abraham did it. Abraham screwed up along the way. He was told to leave and go to the promised land. But he made a tragic mistake, which he didn't know at the time. He brought his nephew with him. Lot, and he took Lot with him and his family. And as you know, he had like virtually nothing but trouble with that guy ever since he disobeyed God and took Lot with him. Well, the worst thing was, as you know, Lot ended up in Sodom and uh, the the city sitting next to him was Gomorrah. And the city had uh, been overrun by lust demons and uh, the demons that cause homosexuality and transgenderism are unbelievably powerful they're incredibly powerful they have some strange capacity to weave themselves into the personality of the individual that's infected with them and they can actually they're actually strong enough and powerful enough to morph the person's body and actually change them from one sex to the other. It's absolutely amazing. A uh, feminine female will start developing masculine qualities. A masculine male will start developing feminine qualities. Everybody uh, knows that and sees that, you know, the slang terms are somebody's effeminate or somebody's butch or what have you. But these demons are, boom, superpowered, superpowered demons. And, um, Once these demons get a foothold, 
they are almost impossible to get out. But back in the Old Testament, there was no deliverance available. So once they got in, they never left. And Lot took his wife there and his four children there and two of his kids, young daughters. He had four daughters, no, no sons. And two of the daughters had gotten married. And the angels came there, as you know, uh, Abraham interceded for Lot, and God sent two angels to go get Lot and his family. And the angels said to Lot, hey, do you have anybody else here besides your wife here and these two daughters? Which is interesting, which is an interesting question because you would have thought the angels would have known how many children Lot had, but apparently they didn't. And Lot said, yeah, I've got two daughters. He said, well, go get them and get their families. Let's get out of here. Because uh, Jehovah, the God of all gods, has told us to wipe this place off the map. The reason they had to be wiped out is that it would have spread everywhere because there was no deliverance back then. And homosexual and transgenderism demons spread like wildfire. And so they went to the two daughters and it, but the Bible says that they looked at Lot like he was crazy. And Lot couldn't get him to go, so he and his wife were very reluctant to leave. Well, you know the story. The two angels practically had to drag him out of the town. And after they got him out of town, they were still reluctant to leave. Then, as if they finally left, they were reluctant to do what the angels told them. Go to the mountains and hide. Well, they didn't want to go there, so they said they wanted to go to Zoar. Zoar was another city loaded with homosexuals and sex perverts and rapists and murderers and killers and everything else. And Lot felt it was safer to go to Zoar than it was to go into the mountains. Well, he got to Zoar and found out that it wasn't. And then he and his wife and his two daughters fled to the mountains. And you know the rest of the story. Lot's wife could not bear to leave. And she turned around and she was ready to go back. She was ready to go back to Sodom. She was behind Lot while they were running. The four of them were running and she was behind Lot and she said, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. I'm going to go back. She turns around and becomes a um, pillar of salt. That was Lot's wife. This whole gigantic mess happened because of Abraham. Abraham had made a mistake. He brought Lot with him when he left. He had to rescue him another time. Remember that? Yeah. He had to rescue him another time. He had gotten in trouble. Then the servants all got into a dispute over the land and their livestock. So then they had to split up. And because Lot was a carnal person, he saw the trees and the, and the water resources at Sodom. He chose Sodom and Abraham took whatever Lot did not choose. That led to today's disaster, which was a pillar of salt for his wife. She just couldn't leave. You know what? My goodness, that's a 21st century born-again Christian right there. Not turning to a pillar of salt, that doesn't happen anymore, but looking back, looking back, and some people call them regrets. All of us looking back over our life, if we chose to, have seen numerous areas where I wish I hadn't have done that. I wish I would have made a better decision. I wish I would have married somebody else. I wish I would have taken that job. I wish I would have quit that job. I wish I would have not got involved with that person. I should have married the first person who asked me. I should have gone to school when I had the money. I should have helped my mother out before she got sick. I should have 
been a better mother or mother, better father to my children. They're all jacked up now. One of them's pregnant. The other one's on drugs. The other one's in a mental institution on uh, medication for schizophrenia. I should have done things differently. I should have never lived with that guy. I should have never married that woman. I should have never allowed my kids to be exposed to my third husband. He molested this one and then he beat that one. I wish I would have done that differently. I wish I could have exercised more when I was young. I wish I would have watched my diet when I was younger. Now I'm out of shape. I'm fat. I got body pains from head to toe. I wish I would have hung around better people. I was friends with people who were knuckleheads. They were bad influences on my life. I wish I hadn't got involved with this person. Uh, they led me into sexual promiscuity, alcohol, and drugs, and over and over and over again. I wish I hadn't done this, and I wish I hadn't have done that, and I wish I wasn't Lot's wife. And in Christianity, the legendary apostle Paul uh, taught us what we were supposed to do. Okay? Uh, none of you were as big a sinner as the Apostle Paul. He was a serial killer. He would hunt down Christians because he thought he was serving God, right? And that's exactly what Islamic terrorists do. They're serving Allah and they're killing other people. They think they're doing God's service. So did Paul. He was a Jewish Pharisee. He was murdering Christians. He thought he was serving God. And... He later got saved on Damascus Road. He got filled with the Holy Ghost you near know, the Fisherman's Wharf. And he became the greatest Christian and the greatest apostle that ever lived. Nobody greater than Paul will ever show up until the two witnesses arrive during the tribulation. That's another Bible study. Well, Paul told us what to do. He told the Corinthians how to handle this situation with regrets he said to them I, I forget those things which are behind me and i reach for those things which are before me i reach for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus my lord and i want to be found in him not having my own righteousness which was of the law but the righteousness of god in christ well, Paul said that he forgot those things which are behind him. Now, that was a bold, shocking statement. That was a bold, shocking statement about a testimony to regrets. Lot's wife is a bold, double shocking example of regrets. Paul, as you may, may recall, had been to heaven. Now, I'm not talking about heaven where all these prophets on the Elijah list go to heaven and Jesus is playing ping pong and poker with God. I'm talking about a real trip to heaven, a true trip to heaven. Paul had seen miracle services like you literally cannot believe. They would get rags or towels and throw them to him. He would, I don't know, take them in his hands, toss them back, pick up another one toss it over to the other person. He'd pick up these rags or these towels, say a short prayer over them, pitch them over to them. The people would take them home and lay them on a disabled, a sick, a demon-infected person. And they would get well. Demons would fly out of people at their homes after these claws were laid on them. Uh, people would get off cots and start walking around. It was... One miracle after the other. In fact, the Bible specifically says in Acts, God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. He had seen miracles you can't conceive or believe. He had seen heaven itself. Heaven is not, not about these people on YouTube who went to heaven. No, I'm not talking about those guys. Those are all familiar spirit trips. I'm talking about somebody who actually went to heaven, the real heaven, not a demonic illusion. He actually saw it. And then he makes the statement, I forget those things which are behind me, 
and I reach for those things which are before me, and I reach for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Can you imagine that? I mean, most Christians would have given anything, A, to have experienced that. I certainly would have. And B, to have kept those fond memories to the moment you die. But Paul was saying, listen, regrets and the, and the good and bad things that have happened to you in your past are to be forgotten because your future is so much more significant. Your future is brighter than anything good or bad that happened in your past. Most Christians, most Christians are like Lot's wife. They have a yearning in their heart to go back to something that they left before they became a Christian. Something they had in their past they left. They still want. Some bad thing in your past is still bothering you to this day. You get up every morning, you look at your current husband, and you say to yourself in the back of your mind, you don't say it out loud, I should have never left my first husband or my second husband. I should have married my childhood sweetheart. Uh, I should have moved to this city. I should have never moved here. I should have raised my daughter differently. I should have done this for my son when I had a chance to do it. Now I don't have the money. Now I don't have the chance. And I'm living with these regrets. What was Paul teaching us? If you look back on your past and you look at the things that happened to you, even if they're, even if they're great and good, even if they're rotten or horrible, He's saying that you're taking your eye off your future. Paul said in Hebrews, I am looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. All the mistakes that we've made in our past and all the good things we've done in our past all get settled out at the judgment seat of Christ. That's all taken care of then. It happens then. But if you're focusing on it now, and you keep thinking about it now, you're going to damage your future ministry and you're not going to fulfill the call of God on your life. You're going to damage your anointing. You're going to hurt yourself. And in some cases, you're going to backslide and do something horrible like Lot's wife did and actually turn back. See, she had, the Bible says she looked back, but she was looking back to go back. Had she not turned to a pillar of salt, she would have gone back to Sodom by herself without her two daughters and without her husband. She was going home. And home was now a pillar of salt. If you continue to look at your past, particularly your regrets, oh, my husband's died. I should have done this before he died. I should have did that before he died. I should, have, I should have prayed more for him. I should have witnessed to him. I should have got him baptized in water. I should have, I should have come home. I, I should have, my wife did this. She got breast cancer. I, sh I should have quit that job. I should have come off the road. I should have got a local job. I should have been home or not. I should have, I should have, would have, I would have, I should have, could have, I should. If you continue to live like that, you are going to ruin the call of God on your life because your future is so much better than your past. Your future, your futures, where you belong, not your past. Paul realized that his future was greater than his healing services where God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. He said, I forget those things. I used to murder Christians. I beat them. I had them imprisoned. I forget those things. I went to heaven and I saw things that were unspeakable, things I couldn't even talk about. They were so sacred. I'm going to forget those things. I'm going to press toward the mark 
for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Why was he doing that? Because he wanted his future to be greater than his past. The angels practically had to drag Lot and his wife out of Sodom after they had told them numerous times the place was going down. You have to get out to save your life. They didn't want to leave. They had to be pushed out. One of the angels said to them, I can't do anything until you're out of here. Can you imagine that? Father Abraham's prayers for Lot. And by the way, he shouldn't even been there. He shouldn't even had to pray them prayers. But Abraham stepped up for him and interceded for him. And the, God told the angels, don't torch the place until they're out of there. And that's why the angels had to get him out. Two of the daughters wouldn't come. They stayed with their families. They thought they were nuts. And two of the daughters died. The other two, raised in perversion and filth all around them, born into it, living in it, they could not release their past. Everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah was a pervert, practically, except Lot, maybe his wife. The two daughters were virgins, but all four of them were sick in the head. Why? They grew up around people sick in the head. If you grow up in a family, it's dysfunctional, like Lot's children did. You're going to be sick in the head. Because children are human sponges. They sponge up everything they're exposed to. Children don't miss a beat. They see everything. They sense everything. They know everything. They can't explain everything because they don't have the knowledge or the experience, but they know things. People don't think they know. Lot's kids were raised around sexual perversion, orgies, bisexuality, transgenderism, homosexuality, anal intercourse, group sex, orgies, everything. They saw everything. Gang rapes, all of it. So it was just like another thing to them. The psychologists call it systematic desensitization. They grew up in it, and so that was normal to them. What was normal to them to do? Incest. Incest was all over Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding smaller cities. By the way, all those cities were torched. We don't know how many there were. But there were probably a dozen or so. But Sodom and Gomorrah were the Chicago and New York type facilities. But all the suburbs got torched, except Zoar. And that was another failure, correct? That was, Zoar would have never been around had Lot not sinned and disobeyed the angels and said, I don't want to go to the mountains. Zoar would have been gone. But all those perverted people living in Zoar, hey, they spread. They lived. They reproduced, and they continued to spread all kinds of sin, wickedness, evil, and perversion. What happened in the mountains with Lot? Well, his, his daughters had sex with Lot. Would that have happened had his mother not looked back and become a pillar of salt? I doubt it. I doubt if any incest would have occurred in that family had the mother been there. The mother wasn't there. Their mother was dead. There was no stopgap. Nothing. There they went. Simply doing what they had been raised to see. Simply doing what a normal person would have done in Sodom and Gomorrah. What would you do? Well, you had incest. No problem. It's less like another thing. We've been systematically desensitized. Not a problem. So what happens? Oh, my God. The Moabites were a thorn in Israel's side. It seems like forever. 
Ammonites, same thing. A disaster. Everything's a disaster. People having regrets and living with regrets and living in the past will destroy your calling and your future anointing. You've been called by God to something great. You've been called by God for miracles. You're a Mark 16 person. You're a Matthew 28 person. Yes, you are. But you will never get there and it will never happen for you. Never. And you will waste your life. I apologize for being so harsh, but somebody should have been harsh with Abraham. And he said, I want to take a lot with me, but there was nobody there. Somebody should have been harsh with Lot's wife. Lot should have stepped up and shaken her or done something to stagger her out of her mind. Nobody was there. Somebody should have been there to stop the daughters from committing incest. There wasn't anybody there. And all these people in your future that you're supposed to heal and deliver and save, they're not going to be healed, delivered, or saved. You know why? Because you were stuck here living in regrets. Living in regrets. You must do exactly what Paul told you to do. You have to do it. You have to forget those things which are behind you. You've got to reach forward to those things which are before you. You have to reach forward past your asinine spouse. Okay? It's your fault. You married a plant. The demon sent you some guy or some gal to marry, and you got sucked in over one thing one reason or another, and you got caught. Now you're living in regrets. You're sitting there every day of your life saying to yourself, oh, my God, my, my parents were psychos. They're all idiots. They lived a screwed up life. My parents didn't raise me right. My parents uh, molested me. They didn't provide for me. They didn't train me on how to live a decent life. So now I'm stuck here, uh, uh, a loser, I'm stupid, I'm ignorant, I'm fat, I'm uneducated, I'm a moron. This is what Paul was talking about. You have got to forget it. You have got to forget those things which are behind you. You have to reach for those things which are before you. You have to reach for the prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus your Lord. You cannot forsake helping the people in front of you for the rest of your life. Do you realize that, that I'm talking about hundreds of people here, thousands of people in some cases are not going to get help because you pulled a lot's wife. You pulled a lot's wife. You looked back, she turned around and she was going to go back, but it was too late. She turned into a pillar of salt before she could take her first step backwards. If she hadn't turned into a pillar of salt, she would have booked. You're doing exactly what Lot's wife did every day of your life, except you are not turning into a pillar of salt. You are simply stuck in the mud as a spiritual loser. You are a spiritual loser. And the reason for that is because you didn't forget those things which are behind you. All of us have numerous failures in life. I have never talked to a Christian. I've been a counselor for over 40 years. I have never talked to a Christian who didn't say, you know, if I had that to do over again. You ever heard that phrase, if I had that to do over again? 100% of all Christians have made that statement 100%. You know, if I had that to do over again, I would have, duh. really, okay, stop, stop, okay? I'm going to pretend I'm Joyce Meyer right now. Stop it. Stop that. Quit that. Knock it off. 
There you go. I just I just took on my Joyce Man Meyer mantle there. I was telling you to stop. Yeah, please stop it. Please, this is Brother Mike now, not Joyce. Please stop it. Your future is flat out awesome if you will stop hauling your regrets around. Like Jacob Marley on the Scrooge. Did you ever see that movie at Christmas Carol? Remember the first guy that came and visited Scrooge, his old business partner, partner was his name Jacob Marley, I think it was. The guy was a very successful person by secular standard, was he not? Yeah, he was very wealthy, great businessman, smart as a whip, better than Scrooge. Smarter than Scrooge, better personality than Scrooge, made more money than Scrooge. He's the one really that was the backbone of that accounting firm. Right? And when he came and visited Scrooge, you know, you know what he was shackled with? He had, he had these balls and chains and bells and stuff on him. The guy looked like horrible. What was he doing? Hauling around stuff that you are currently hauling around. Regrets. What was his main speech to Scrooge? His regrets. His regrets. I, I, I should have been nicer to people. I, I shouldn't have coveted money. I should have got married. I should have fallen in love. I should have had children. I should have been a good person. I should have, and I would have, and I could have, but I couldn't have, shouldn't have, wouldn't have, could have, should have, would have. Today is the day of destiny for you. You're on the podcast on Sunday morning with Brother Mike. And here you're sitting here looking at me, and I have regrets today. I regret my stream yard is not working, and my video so for some reason isn't working. That never happened before. Yeah, I regret that. But you know what? When I'm done with this podcast, I'm going to let that go. And I'm going to reach forward to the next podcast and get this video working somehow and <laughs> figure out what happened. Okay, that's what you're going to do. Will you do that? Will you please? Here, let me talk to Jesus for you. Father God, my friends on my podcast right now, uh, they get a li they got a little brother Mike in them, okay? I've done this in my past. I got a lot to be regretful over. I wasted most of my life, and I am so sorry, and I'm asking you to forgive me. I married women I should have never even shaken hands with. I spent literally hours, months, weeks, and years chasing the almighty buck, fixing up rental properties, investing in the stock market. Lord, I did everything. It was horrible. But it's over now. And Ephesians chapter 1 that I taught on last week says that we are not at fault. We are blameless and we are have no regrets. All those were nailed to the cross of Calvary. And I'm asking you, Lord, to bless all my friends today who are living in regrets, particularly over things like money, children, relationships, and spouses. Those are the usual ones that hurts people so bad. Those are the usual ones. And I'm asking you to help them, Lord. I'm asking you to forgive them. I'm asking you to help them remember what Brother Paul told the Corinthians, what he told the Hebrews. He said, forget your past, cut your regrets, and look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And cut your past and move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to spiritually reach down at the back of your boat. I want you to pick the line up, the tow line. I want you to pick up a knife, and I want you to cut that tow line right now. And let that thing float away. I want you to cut the tow line today on the podcast. 
And I want you to go from this day forward with no regrets of any kind. I want you to cut the good things that have happened to you instead of always, as they say, living in the past. Well, when I was young, I used to, when I first started in the ministry, I, when we, we had our old church, we used to do, when I used to attend this church, oh, these good things happened. And I, I want you to reach down behind the boat and I want you to cut that tow line to those good things that happened to you in the past. And I want you to go back and get in the driver's seat and floor this thing. Open it up and move forward. And never look back again.